Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief review of Altman's Z, which is probably the most famous credit scoring model. It has survived 30 years of application or more than that. Altman Z is a linear discriminant model. That means it divides potential borrowers into two classes, either high or low default risk classes. The Altman Z does not directly produce a probability of default. However, we can take the Altman Z score, map it to a credit rating, and translate that credit rating to a probability of default. So there is an indirect path from the Altman Z score to the probability of default. I'll show that in an upcoming tutorial. For now, the Altman Z is a discriminant function or credit classification model that takes five fundamental variables. So here's the shorthand, and the idea is we get the metrics for the borrower and plug those metrics into the linear function to produce a z-score. These are the five fundamental factors, fundamental variables. The first variable is working capital divided by total assets. So that's net liquid assets in the numerator. We have current assets minus current liabilities. The second measure is retained earnings divided by total assets. So retained earnings is the cumulative total reinvested earnings to the company. Part of the deliberate theory here is that younger companies will have less of a tenure to accumulate retained earnings and maybe a little bit more likely to default. And older companies have a longer history, more time to accumulate retained earnings and maybe less likely to default. The third variable is EBIT over total assets, where EBIT is earnings before interest in taxes. So this really is return on assets, classic measure, subclass of return on capital. The fourth measure has much in common with a structural approach to uh, credit risk market value of equity divided by book value of total liabilities. As the numerator gets smaller and smaller, the company has less of an equity cushion in order to fund the liabilities. So this is a classic structural look at the solvency of the company. And finally, we have a capital turnover ratio, common and popular sales divided by total assets. And so when Altman did his study, he found significant differences for each of these fundamental variables between bankrupt, the, bank, the group of bankrupt companies and the group of non-bankrupt borrowers or companies. And so what we do is we take the Altman's Z function here, the discriminant function, and each of these five variables for the company is assigned a factor weight or factor loading, or we could even call them betas. So if the company here has working capital divided by total assets of 0.2, that's X1 here, that's the company's own measure, it gets multiplied by the factor loading of 1.2. So the 1.2 is part of the Altman Z. And this is a linear function, so for the next variable, we take retained earnings divided by total assets. And in my example here, I've got a zero for the company. That's the X2. That gets multiplied by the feature of the model, which is a factor loading of 1.4. And you can see the highest factor loading here in the classic Altman Z for public companies. There are different versions of it. The highest factor loading of 3.3 goes to that return on assets measure, EBIT over total assets. So the company's measure gets weighed or multiplied by 3.3. And so down here on the Excel spreadsheet, I have the factor loadings or beta. And again, these are not in yellow because these are built into or features of the classic Altman Z. And up here in yellow, I have the company specific measures or inputs. So, so these will vary. And so, by the way, I took these from Sanders, the assigned readings for FRM candidates. So all we do is we take that first X1, working capital divided by total assets, for the company, 0.2, and multiply it by the factor loading of 1.2. In Excel, I can simply use the sum product formula, which takes this array, that's the company-specific measures, 0.2, 
and gives and multiplies and adds by the betas here. So this sum product is taking the point 2, multiplying by 1.2, adding the next product, 0, multiplied by 1.4, adding negative 0.2, multiplied by 3.3, adding 0.1, multiplied by 0.6, and finally adding 2, multiplied by 1. So it's the sum product is executing this formula right here in light green. And what we get here, the discriminant function produces for us a z-score of 1.64. That's based on these metrics. And notice I have the model returning a default. That's because if we go down here just a little bit, I'll see that there's an interpretation table here. And generally, an Altman z of 1.81 or less indicates or predicts default between 1.81 and 2.99 is the so-called zone of ignorance, meaning we're not sure. And then above 2.99, the model predicts no default. So there's really a three-state interpretation, but it's, class, it's generally called a two-state model that gives us either default or no default. So for example, if Let's say we just increased this retained earnings to total assets up to 0.5. The z-score would then be 2.34, and we'd be in the zone of ignorance. And if I increased it even more to 3.0 to 1.0, we'd be in the no default zone. So finally, let me just share the three or four drawbacks that are mentioned by Anthony Saunders. And the first drawback is that of this model, or, and of this linear discriminant model is that there are only two extremes or two states, default or no default. And that obviously does not give us any granularity in our predictions. Two, the second drawback or criticism is of these constant factor weights. In other words, what makes us think that these factor weights that applied historically are going to be any good going forward in time? Number three, the model only considers these five fundamental variables. It ignores other variables, including non-quantifiable variables. And so those are the three key criticisms. Saunders also mentions a criticism that's really not generic to Altman Z, but the fact that there is no actual centralized database to store these statistics. So this is uh, David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.